Shevley from Web Sellers Circle, and uh, we're going to talk about eBay or internet video today. I'm officially dubbing this year coming up, 2009, the year of internet video. And I have asked Danny Byrne from Ghost Leg Media to come join us. She is going to be the resident expert on Web Seller Circle. Hi, Cindy. Thanks for inviting me. Hi, Janelle. So Danny and I are going to talk about all the new exciting changes that are coming up in 2009 um, when it comes to video. When we've talked about video, uh, we've always talked about the importance of it. And I started talking about this to you all, you know, early last year, how important video is going to become in your, as a sales tool for you. Now, you know, we've talked about it since the official launch of um, the announcement that eBay was going to accept short videos inside their listings. And then in June, uh, we had eBay Live, and I was struck by the number of people who had flip video cameras and still cameras that were t taking videos and then putting them up on YouTube and broadcasting them out and it happened live during eBay live and they're still surfacing on YouTube I think this um, the technology is all in place and these flip video cameras and still cameras that are shooting video are making it easier than ever to, to use video now the tipping point for video started um, when users got broadband access. Before, you know, using that dial-up modem, it wasn't very practical to download or stream those videos. It would take hours and hours just to, to load one, you know, 30-second clip. But now that we've got always-on access and DSL and broadband connections, it's easier than ever to use video. And uh, now everybody is able to see these short clips, and people are watching um, video at an extremely amazing rate. The growth of video, internet video is, uh, is astonishing. And you know, Cindy, if you really want to see how video has changed the face of the web, the easiest way to tell the power is to go to the, the selling page of any web marketer. A couple of years ago, maybe even just six months ago, that would have been a long sales page full of text, testimonials, yellow highlighters, all the things we've come to associate with Internet marketers. Today, that page will be one big video above the fold. There will probably be some text down at the bottom. But these fellows and, and these women that make their living selling on the Internet, selling you how to make money on the Internet, they know what works, and what they've done is they've thrown away the traditional web selling techniques and gone almost entirely to video. So I think that speaks to how important it is to use video as your own sales tool now. It's so true. Um, if you're not using video or you're not going to use video in 2009, you're really going to be left in the dust. You know, YouTube has experienced phenomenal growth. They've gone from zero to being one of the top five ranked sites on the Internet in just a few short years. In fact, I just heard an astonishing fact that YouTube is now number two in Internet search. So that means that after Google, people go to YouTube to search for answers to their questions. They're getting something like 2.6 billion searches a month. If you're not looking at putting video on YouTube, you're just going to be not found anymore. So YouTube has proven itself as a sales tool, and people who are using video in their listings are seeing phenomenal increase in their final values. You know, and that's really nothing to sneeze at in this time of downward pressure for pricing. So, you know, here is a tool that we sellers can use to bring up some prices and get some more interest in our um, in our listings. Now. Over the last year, we've seen um, the number of service providers on eBay, you know, providing service for videos, going from just a handful to over a dozen. There is a lot of interest in video and in getting it out to us. 
Um, earlier this year, we talked about Vizar. It is a company that um, is simply a one button upload to get your video into your listings on eBay. You simply upload your videos to, to Bazaar, you press a button, and it puts it inside of your listing. Now, you don't have to learn anything about HTML or embedding. Bazaar does it all, and they have a nice little player that's a high-quality, high-resolution player. Now, they're seeing that they're getting over 100,000 videos a month on uh, using the Bizarre service. That's a lot of videos for eBay. And in fact, earlier last week, Vizar announced that they are expanding their service out beyond eBay. They're going to open it up to websites and blogs and to other online venues. This is going to be very important, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute. You know, Vizar is very forward-looking and looking at the year to come. We've also talked about Yodio. This is a service that is free that allows you to upload a still photo to their site and then call in with a phone and now you have a multimedia voice and um, still photos put together with motion that you can embed into your eBay listings. They also are very forward looking. They have just announced that they're turning in or they're offering a service that will allow testimonials as well. And if you're in a service business, that's going to be awesome because you're going to be able to put those on your web page and some other places that I'm going to show you here in a second. We also um, talked to you a little bit about deal, deal for It. Now, if you don't want to be the star of your own show or you don't want to exactly learn all the video techniques, which I recommend you do, but if you're not ready to go there, Deal for It has a staff of professional actors that act out different scenarios that coax your buyers into hitting that buy now or make offer button on those fixed price listings. And sellers who are using this Deal for It, the actors and the Deal for It player are seeing a lot of um, hits and a lot of interaction with their listings. So those are a couple of the uh, different sites that have uh, uh, come up in the last year that are still expanding out and offering services to us. Now, you know, it is so important to have video if you're interested in building your SEO and getting that um, top ranking on Google. If you have a video, you still have a very, very good chance of getting top ranking on the Google search. And in fact, if you upload it to several different sites, you'll have even better chance of seeing uh, it being in the top several spots on a Google ranking. And that is nothing that is very easy to do um, with just plain text. We also talked a little bit, um, oh, it was, I guess, about a year ago. We told you that Amazon was um, all opening up the review area to videos. Now, this is really kind of exciting. If you notice here, um, Danny um, uploaded a video of a little esoteric kind of tool that I have. It's called a flash diffuser for a, a camera. And you can see that 31 people have looked at this video and rated it as helpful. And, you know, the thing is, Cindy, that doesn't mean it had 31 people look at it. That means 31 people thought it was helpful enough to register and rank it and then rate the review. So this is a really good sign of the effect it can have on your buyers. If nothing else, this tells you that you sold 31 flash diffusers that you wouldn't have sold otherwise because, of course, this is a laudatory review. This isn't a review saying don't buy this thing. It's saying this is a great tool. Here's how it works. If people found that helpful, that means they want this flash diffuser after they sold it. And for 31 people to say this review help me decide whether I wanted to buy it. Most of the time you figure for every one person who ranks or rates something, there are at least 10 people who agree who didn't. So you could say with a pretty good guess that this review, this little uh, two-minute review of the flash diffuser by itself may be responsible for upwards of 300 sales. 
you know, take, you take 10 minutes, you upload it, and you get an additional 300 sales. That's a pretty powerful tool. Yeah, and I have actually gotten emails from people saying they, they chose to buy my little flash diffuser because of this review. So I know proof positive. I was on a, uh, a webinar call uh, from Amazon earlier, you know, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and they let it slip a little um, thing that's going to happen right after the first of the year sometime. They're not saying when, but this is going to be really powerful and exciting for Amazon sellers. So let's go on to the web, and I'm going to show you live what I'm talking about. So now... Amazon has um, allowed videos in their listings for certain third-party vendors. They haven't opened it up to the public, but if you, you know, are um, one of their higher-up vendors and you have a good quality video, they allowed it as a test on, on Amazon. Well, they've had such good results for that that they're going to open up videos to third-party vendors um, to put on the Amazon listings. Now this is powerful stuff because now not only are you going to be able to put a still picture up, and we all know how important it is to have a still picture of our product, right on the Amazon page we're going to be allowed to put on a video. And that is um, going to be uh, make it so important for you know, for you to learn how to use your videos um, and, and to be able to put them up. Now, these, this Amazon player, I have to say, is really good, high quality. Uh, they've done a lot of work to make sure that they're, they're streaming a good, high quality video. So it's going to be a very nice looking little video, and I'm looking forward to it. And I suspect as more and more videos come up, they're going to move that video portion up to above the fold is what they like to call it. Now, uh, we also have heard Janelle talk to us about the um, local search for um, Google. So, you know, once you've learned how to get yourself listed on local search, the next thing you want to do is consider video. Now, here's my local search that Janelle taught me how to put up. And if we go into more information, now my clients can look and see a video not only of me talking about the class, but they can see a video testimonial. Now you can upload several videos, but um, you know, do get some video testimonials, especially if you're a service business. How powerful is that? It's just amazing. When somebody comes in, now they can see you know, somebody telling them that I'm a, I'm a, a good player. And you know, Cindy, this is what they call social proof. These kind of testimonials, especially on a third party site, are very important. People expect you to have things on your own website saying, hey, I'm wonderful. But Amazon and Google and uh, other search engine sites, they're considered to be a little more impartial. So when they see a testimonial for you, even though it says it was in uploaded by the uh, person being lauded in the testimonial, the testimonial carries a little more weight. So being able to add these videos to YouTube and then pull them into your local Google search results is really important. It's another reason that if you're not using video now in 2009, you've got to add it because it's going to be one of the most important tools you're going to have for getting your name out there to clients. So they'll find you and use your services or go to your website or go to your blog, go to your eBay store. Whatever you're trying to do, video and Google are going to be tied together really tightly and that's going to help you rank on Google, get you found, and get customers coming to you. Thanks, Danny. Now, one thing that I want to talk about is, you know, to get top ranking on, uh, you know, the search engine on Google or Yahoo or MSN, what you want to do is sort of dominate with your video. And to do that, what you do is 
upload your video to several sites, more than one site. Now there's a whole array of different sites that you can upload to. And then earlier this year, you know, Danny and I would sit down and, and upload our videos one at a time to these sites. And that's uh, quite a commitment. It takes time to upload one and then put in all the keywords and then go to the next site and upload it. Um, this site called TubeMogul is a free service, and when you sign up with TubeMogul, it does the work for you. You upload it once to the um, to YouTube Mogul, and then you can launch the video. Now, I've already launched this, but if I hadn't, after I uploaded it, I could just hit that rocket that says Launch, and then it'll ask me, who do I want to um, send it to? And here's the list of the different ones that I have. There are more sites available, and what I recommend you do is to go to each site and see if they fit your listing. And go then and sign up on the site, get a user ID and a password, and then you come back to TubeMogul and put that information in. Then all you have to do is upload that video once and then hit the launch button and TubeMogul sends it to the video sharing sites that you decide that you want to have it sent to. Now you can close this and then go off and do your own work. Uh, you don't have to sit here and watch this and a lot of the video sites will actually send you an email when the upload has happened. This saves me a lot of time. So you can see how video is changing and um, just in the last few months since the last time we talked to you about video there have been some pretty big changes. Some of them have been on YouTube itself. YouTube has gotten a reputation as having not the best video and that's true they don't um, w because YouTube was built to make video available to everyone. They didn't go for the most current cutting edge technology. But what's happened is that other sites have taken advantage of the, um, the fact that they can stream video in a really high quality or they can have widescreen. And Google has been getting a little bit restless. Well, Google and YouTube, Google owns YouTube, have been showing trailers for Hollywood movies now in high definition widescreen for a few months as, a, as an experiment and most people took this as a sign that YouTube was going to go um, to a higher definition quality player. In the last oh, week to ten days YouTube has replaced its old 4 by 3 aspect ratio player with the new widescreen player. Um, that means that now if you have a video on YouTube, what's going to happen is that instead of having the um, bands of black bars across the top, if you had widescreen, now you're going to have them on the side if you have uh, standard definition. Now, Danny, I have a question for you. When you're talking about high definition, is that the same as widescreen? Actually, a lot of people are going to use them interchangeably on the web, but they aren't the same. High definition means that there's uh, extra lines in the video itself. Um, the way video works is it draws lines across your TV screen. Um, in, on computers, it draws pixels across your monitor. And high definition will double the number of lines or pixels, and it'll have m actually more detail in the picture. Widescreen just changes the aspect ratio. Um, instead of 4 by 3, which is kind of square like the old monitors, it's now the, the common aspect ratio is 16 by 9. Usually anything that's in widescreen will probably be also in high definition, but they don't have to be. So you can think of them as the same thing, um, even if your camcorder doesn't record in high def, if it records in 16 by 9, that's good enough. So you're going to see this sort of um, new video player on YouTube now for everything. However, it's still in the, when you embed it onto your own website, it's still going to be the old smaller one with the lower quality. I also want you to notice that down here it says watch in normal quality. This is showing in a high quality video. 
uh, right now, the text is much crisper and clearer than it normally is in a YouTube video. So you can see that they're getting, if they can sniff out your connection speed now, if you have a broadband or a high-speed connection that can handle high definition, they'll serve you a high definition video, uh, even in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio with the black on the sides to make it, you know, they're not going to stretch it and make it look weird. Um, and if you find that your computer really can't handle it, you can switch back to normal quality, but most people won't want to. The other thing that YouTube is doing is that they're finally finding ways to monetize YouTube to pay for how much Google spent on them. So they're running ads across the bottom of their videos. Um, they're running all kinds of stuff to get you to click on money sites for them. You don't want your buyers going off and spending money with someone else. So it's becoming increasingly important that when you upload videos to YouTube that you make sure that you have a call to action that will send your buyers to your money site. You want to make sure that if you can, you include a watermark all throughout your videos with your website name on it so that if somebody borrows your video that um, you'll get the credit, they'll come to you to buy whatever it is your video is selling. And you really want people to borrow your video. That's a great thing. So make sure you have those wet watermarks to direct people back to you after they uh, view your video. And as the last uh, frame in your video, try doing something like this. When you upload your video in the video information, put an HTML link to your website uh, as the first part of your information. Don't talk about keywords yet. Just put a link so it shows because you only get one line of text here showing in um, the YouTube by default. You have to click on more information to see anything else and almost no one does. So make sure the first thing you have is a clickable link. Then as your last frame, put an arrow or something else telling people where it's pointing right to that link and telling people to click on it to go to your website. Uh, we do this at GhostLeg. We do it at Web Seller Circle. I know Janelle has been using it. Anyone who does it finds that it's really quite effective in sending uh, viewers back to your website. So make sure that when you use Google, you're getting the most out of it that you can. i sorry, YouTube. You're getting the most out of it that you can. You don't want to have people coming to YouTube and then clicking on these things down here and going off your website. The other thing that's happening on YouTube is that they've built this search bar now right into their player. You can see this is still the old 4 by 3 player, um, but up here now, you don't have to, after you're done with the video, you don't have to go back to YouTube or back to Google to look for similar videos. You can search right from within the video player. These searches aren't on topic, they're on keywords and on titles. So when you upload your YouTube videos, make sure that you use t keyword tags. Um, get those keyword sheets out that people in OSI have learned how to make to use to make sure that you get good Google rankings. They work on YouTube too, so make sure that you use the appropriate keywords for your video. And, and get them in your titles and in your tags so that when someone finishes and searches, they don't go and find your competitors. They find more information from you. Now, here's an example of what Cindy was talking about on how important it is to use multiple videos. Um, we've uploaded this fulfillment by Amazon video using TubeMogul to a whole bunch of sites. When you go to Google and you search on fulfillment by Amazon, what you're going to find is one, two, three, four of the top four, or four of the top five, the first four if you want to count this one, are that same video that we just saw on YouTube, but it's at Web Seller Circle. Uh, no, it's not. That's, that, that's even better. That's that information tag I told you to make sure you put on each of these results, it's showing you our HTML of where we want people to go. So this is the YouTube version. This is TrueVO. This is Google Video. This is MetaCafe. This is the same video. It is a huge featured video 
for the YouTube video. And over here in related videos, we see once again Cindy's video as two, the top two out of three. So how you can beat that kind of exposure and ranking with anything besides video, I can't imagine. Right now, video doesn't suffer from the so-called Google slap for duplicate con content. If you had uploaded the same uh, essay or review of your products to all these sites, you wouldn't be getting this kind of ranking. In fact, you'd be penalized because Google doesn't like duplicate content. But as far as videos go at this point, Google is not penalizing Google duplicate content. In the coming year, Google is going to be searching inside videos, and this is going to be even more important. Google is changing the way that they search for videos so that they'll be able to not only look at your keywords, but they'll be able to um, scrub through the videos and find their own keywords to put with your video so that your content will be searchable on Google. And you may find yourself not only with the top four or five spots, but maybe the top ten spots on several different pages. So use those keywords, make those videos, send them all the heck all over the place. It's going to be really important. I want to show you something else that's coming in the next year. This is something that to me is really amazing. Stanford University has made this service available for free right now to anyone. You go to zunavision.stanford.edu, index PHP, and you'll be able to see this. Now, here's what's happening. This is an old video of a women's baseball team, and you can see there's a blank wall behind the player. When you upload a picture to them, to Stanford, they'll take that content and embed it in the wall. Now, there it is. You see that Coke sign back there? Watch, they're going to do it with another Coke sign. The player runs right in front of it. What's fabulous about this is not just that it's available to people, but that it goes with the content in the video. It'll be scaled properly. It'll be in the right perspective. And Stanford is able to make things happen in front of that logo. So it looks not just like the old picture in picture, but it looks like an integral part of the video. Think of how you might be able to use this on something like Google Search. If you have uh, a store and you're putting yourself up on Google Search and you can prove to your neighbors that you're getting really good results with this, you're getting a lot of hits, you're coming up first in the 10-pack, you can go to the guy selling espresso from his cart on the uh, corner and say, if you pay me uh, three bucks a hit, I'll put your logo somewhere on the wall on my store so everybody that comes to me knows that you're just down the street selling espresso because you're getting crappy SEO. I know how to do this. I'm doing really well, and I'll prove to you the number of hits you get, and we'll share the money. Or you might want to uh, in reverse it and go to Starbucks and say, I'll make this website for you if you let me put my logo up on your store because Starbucks might get more hits than you. So this kind of technology is going to be available to you in the coming years to make just immense changes in the way you're found. The other thing that's going to be really important is now that you have these videos up everywhere is to start using social media to build backlinks. That's going to be ever more important with Google. They're not going to just look at keywords words in the future. They're going for things that are considered interesting. The content on your website, if it doesn't have uh, video, is going to be rated as less interesting in 2009. That means if you have the same sort of backlinks, the same sort of keywords, and you don't have video, and a second site does, that second site is going to rank higher with Google just because it has video. Video is going to give them an extra, like an extra star in their check boxes of reasons you might want to go and search on this site. So it's going to be really important for you to use video everywhere you can and then use social media to point and make a web between all these videos. So maybe you've uploaded uh, that video we talked about, about gray cards. So you'd upload it to Squidoo, then you'd upload it to a web page. 
then you would make a Twitter about how you've uploaded it to these two places. Then you would post on your blog about how you've done it. Now you're starting to create all these interconnected video sites, and they're all pointing to where you want them to point. You decide if you want people to come to your blog or to your eBay store, whatever. The idea isn't to send them just a Twitter and say, I have a video. You want that that to lead to your eBay store. You want your blog post to send people to your eBay store. Um, but you want to create this web of links so that you start getting those multiple hits on Google. And that will be very, very important in the coming year to, to use social media to get ever more traffic to your websites. Okay, Danny. It's really true. You need to um, do the, the circle thing and, and think of it as a, as a circle. You're going to use these videos in a number of places to keep you know, pointing back and forth at the, the different sites, and that is going to help build your SEO. And it is especially important um, as we get into our being more competitive on the Internet. Um, we'll um, talk really quickly about how important it is to start improving your videos now. We sort of had a year to get used to making our videos and getting them fine-tuned. And because we've had that year of practice, it's going to put us ahead of the game. However, as we go forward, it's going to be even more important to improve the quality of your video. Now, when we say you have to improve your video, what we mean is your buyers, your viewers, are the ones who are going to be demanding that. They're going to be seeing professional quality video all over the web. So if you've just been getting by with a, a camera phone or a webcam and you haven't done anything to improve that video, people are not going to be impressed by it. You need to be able to do the three most important things in video, which are tell a story, light it well, and have good sound. That doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money. That doesn't mean you have to make long movies or be Steven Spielberg or have special effects. What it does mean is that you have to have some emotional connection between your video and your viewer. If you think about what you see on TV, like a commercial for Mr. Clean, they're not putting that commercial up because no one knows how to mop their floors and they're trying to teach them. What they're doing is making an emotional connection. You want to buy that product because if you don't, your children are going to get diphtheria or something because they crawled on your floor. So you, you don't necessarily want to use that kind of crazy marketing, but you want to do something that makes people stop and think and feel like your product will improve their lives. You want to not only demonstrate the product's features, but tell about its benefits. To do that, you need to light things well. That doesn't mean you have to buy really expensive video lights. You might just go down to Goodwill and get a couple of pole lamps and light it, but video requires a lot of lighting. Don't try to cheap out on the lights. Make sure you have a really well-lit, easy-to-view video with natural color. Something that's kind of bluish and dark isn't going to cut it next year. And finally, make sure you have good sound. Now, um, Audacity is free. It's a really good piece of sound software. You can download it, and it's just everything you're going to need for sound editing, especially for eBay. Learn how to use these things. If you don't know how, we did a series of four videos last year, and they're still really relevant to what we're talking about now. This four-volume set was four one-hour videos that will teach you how to use video. We've also done... Uh, videos about the flip and taught you how to not only use your flip but how to edit it with free software you probably already have on your computer. These kind of things are what you're going to want to look at if you're not familiar with video already. And finally, I want to encourage you to visit the Ghost Leg blog. This is free uh, information. It's full of information about YouTube how to make video, how to use cameras, how to edit. It's just, I, you know, it's my blog, so I think it's great. But I hope you will, too, and I encourage you to go there as well. 
Yeah, Danny, I, I, I love reading your blog because there's lots of great information on the blog itself. It's uh, a, a, an amazing um, resource. So if you all are, haven't uh, gone by the ghost forward slash blog, I really recommend that you do that.